Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 126 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, At the time of recording this, it's autumn. It's fall. It's uh, the beginning of this season. Uh, If you're listening in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, then it will be autumn when this episode is released uh, for you too. But if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then of course it won't be autumn. But uh, I'm talking about that because today is an autumn-themed episode. Uh, This is an episode about pumpkin patches. So some of you might not know what pumpkin patches are. Uh, Let me just explain that really quickly. A pumpkin patch is an event that is temporary. We only have them during this season, uh, during autumn, usually the whole month of October, and maybe a couple days at the end of September too. Uh, So they are temporary events um, where a certain space is dedicated to uh, become a pumpkin patch. And so uh, there are many pumpkins that are grown there on a little farm, maybe. Uh, Not all of the pumpkin patches uh, have this farm, but some of them do. A lot of them do. Uh, And there are pumpkins growing there. And there is also a big space for a lot of autumn related activities. Uh, A lot of things that are really fun for kids and even for adults. And so these places are called pumpkin patches. uh, And it is one of the most autumn themed things uh, you can think of. Uh, This is uh, the type of activity that you want to do with your whole family to really get the feeling of the season, the fall feeling. And I actually went to a pumpkin patch just a few days ago, so I'll talk a little bit about that and about pumpkin patches in general. And I'm sure this will be a very informative episode for you. Something that's informative is something that's uh, educational. Uh, You learn information from that. So this will be an educational topic. Uh, You'll learn a lot about pumpkin patches. And I prefer to talk about pumpkin patches rather than Halloween. Uh, A lot of you ask for this type of uh, episode, a Halloween episode. I don't like Halloween. I don't celebrate it. I'm not interested in it at all. So that's why I don't uh, like to do episodes on Halloween during this part of the year. But pumpkin patches are equally as interesting, in my opinion. So Uh, I think that you'll enjoy this episode today. Uh, Before we continue on, uh, remember that my U.S. Conversations podcast is available now. So if you want to try to practice your listening with real conversations between native speakers while we speak naturally, uh, then make sure to sign up for this podcast and you'll get a new conversation every month. Uh, with the transcript included and the definitions of key words and phrases that we use. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you just need my training to help you understand native speakers when they speak fast and you want my listening practice seminars, then make sure to sign up for my membership. The link is also down below. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you like this podcast, 
please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pumpkin patches. First of all, it's important to know that the United States uh, is obsessed with pumpkins during autumn. So if you come to the United States during this season, you're going to see pumpkins everywhere. You're going to see pumpkins uh, used for decoration. People might have pumpkins around their house and uh, in their yards and uh, people use pumpkins to uh, decorate their house and create the autumn flavor uh, for that season, right? And speaking of flavor, uh, we use pumpkins literally for flavor. So there are a lot of food items and dessert items that include pumpkin or pumpkin seeds, right? And drinks can also be pumpkin flavored. We have a famous drink called the pumpkin spice latte, uh, which people get um, during this season every year. And so, uh, as you can see, there are many things uh, that involve pumpkins uh, around this time. So that's uh, another reason why people love to go to pumpkin patches, because there are uh, tons and tons of pumpkins there. And uh, actually, people go to pumpkin patches to buy their pumpkins. That's really uh, one of the main reasons that people might go, because they sell pumpkins there. And you can go and choose your own pumpkin from the pumpkin farm that they have, if they have a little pumpkin farm there. And they have all different sizes and shapes. Uh, and you can go and choose your pumpkin with your family. Uh, it's a nice activity for kids especially. And it's very similar to the activity that we have around the Christmas season, um, where people go to choose their Christmas tree. So this is akin to that. By the way, when we say that something is akin to something else, we're saying that it's similar to that other thing. So choosing your pumpkin at pumpkin patches is akin to choosing your Christmas tree uh, during uh, the Christmas season. And in fact, a lot of these pumpkin patches actually become uh, Christmas tree farms just a month later. Uh, so they serve both purposes sometimes. So uh, this is something really fun for the family to go and choose their pumpkin and just to see all of the pumpkins there at the pumpkin farm. And at the pumpkin patch that we went to last week, they also had sunflowers growing and you're able to cut your own sunflower and take that home with you. So they might have more things growing than just pumpkins. They might have sunflowers or other things as well. So that's one of the main reasons that people go to pumpkin farms. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Grammarly. When it comes to written communication in the workplace, we all know how difficult and time-consuming it can be to ensure your writing is clear and effective, especially if you have to write in English and you're not a native speaker. Thankfully, Grammarly can help you with this. Grammarly is an AI-powered writing tool that gives you helpful suggestions while you're writing so that you can sound more natural and fluent. Grammarly's free and premium features integrate easily into your daily workflow, helping you save time in every stage of your writing process. I recently used Grammarly to help me write an important script for work, and its suggestions were super useful. I love that Grammarly detects when my writing isn't as clear as it could be and that it shows me what adjustments to make. 
If English isn't your first language, then Grammarly can help your writing sound more native, and Grammarly Premium tailors its suggestions specifically to multilingual speakers. In fact, 98% of non-native English speakers say that Grammarly helps them sound more fluent in their written communication. Also, Grammarly helps speed up your writing process by letting you instantly create first drafts, by helping you find the perfect final word for each of your projects, and by offering suggestions everywhere you write, whether it be documents, messages, emails, social media, or other apps. Communicate effortlessly with Grammarly. Go to Grammarly.com slash ESL. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash ESL. But let me also talk about the different activities that uh, pumpkin patches offer. So there are many things that you can do, uh, things for kids or things for the whole family. So one of them is that many pumpkin patches offer train rides. Uh, this is a very small train. It's not a real train, of course. It's a small mechanical train that goes uh, around the tracks in a circle. By the way, the word tracks refers to uh, the thing where the train uh, rolls on, right? It goes on these tracks and uh, that's how it moves. This thing on the ground, these are the tracks. So the train moves along the tracks and goes in a circle and it's just for little kids usually so adults can't go on this ride and i mention that in particular because my son went on this train ride last week and he didn't know that uh, we weren't gonna accompany him by the way the word accompany means that you go with someone or something. So he didn't know that we weren't going to accompany him. He didn't know that we weren't going to ride with him on the train. And so he was super excited before he got on the train. Because if you don't have kids, you might not know this, but little boys usually love trains. <laughs> a lot of them are obsessed with trains. Uh, so my son was super excited to ride on this train. But when he realized uh, that I wasn't going to get on with him, he started crying and screaming. But it was too late. The train had already started and it took five laps around the track. By the way, the word lap in this context refers to when something goes in a complete circle around something else. So you can run laps around the track or the field, for example. So this train went around five times. It took five laps. And my son was crying and screaming this whole time. It was sad, but it was kind of funny for the other people to see this because it was kind of a funny sight to see this kid crying on the train, uh, going around, uh, whereas normally kids are really happy to be on these trains. Um, so it was sad and a little funny to see, uh, but more sad. And uh, he didn't enjoy it. It was a waste. And so now we know next time that we're not going to put him on this train because he doesn't want to go alone. So that was kind of a failure, but most kids love it. And uh, on this train in particular, if the kid sits in the front, uh, in the first cart, then they can also ring the bell on the train. And kids love that too. So the train ride is one of the activities that people like at Pumpkin Patches. And another one is the petting zoo. So 
My son went on the train ride first, and then he went to the petting zoo after that, and he loved it. So all his tears went away, and he uh, was smiling and laughing uh, for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, what is a petting zoo? A petting zoo is a small area where kids and adults can go inside and feed and pet certain animals, usually goats. Uh, this is probably the most common animal that you find at petting zoos. There might also be other animals, maybe sheep. Uh, I'm not sure what other animals, but at this petting zoo, there were many goats. And before we went, uh, I had the feeling that my son was going to like this because a couple weeks ago, we saw uh, a couple goats um, that were being loaded into a truck. And my son was really intrigued by these goats. Uh, the word intrigued means that you're really interested in something. So my son was really intrigued when he saw these goats and he acted in a way that I hadn't seen him act before. And he seemed really fascinated by them. And so when we went to this pumpkin patch, I had the feeling that my son was going to really like uh, going to the petting zoo to see these goats. And I was right. He absolutely loved it. Uh, he uh, had the time of his life in this petting zoo, surrounded by goats, and he just uh, tried to pet each one. Uh, and uh, by the way, when you pet an animal, this means that you run your hand across its fur or hair. Uh, this is petting an animal. So he pet all of these goats. He watched them run around. He didn't feed them. Uh, we thought that that might be a little too intimidating for him to feed the animals. Maybe next time uh, we'll do it because he did really well at the petting zoo this time. So maybe he'll be able to feed them next time. And he didn't seem scared at all, uh, even though there were goats all around him. And some of them were pretty big. Uh, there were goats of all different sizes. There were a couple pregnant goats, too. That was pretty interesting. And some baby goats that had a lot of energy and were running around uh, the whole uh, petting zoo area. But my son wasn't scared. He did really well. So that was a big success. We're definitely going to take him to more petting zoos in the future. So that's another really cool activity. Another one is the hay ride. So uh, hay refers to uh, dried grass that's used to feed farm animals. Uh, so a hay ride is um, an event where a tractor pulls a wagon or a cart behind it and that wagon or cart is loaded with hay. Uh, when something is loaded with something else, we're just saying that it is filled with this thing. So it's loaded with hay, it's filled with hay uh, so that you can sit down comfortably on it. And then the tractor takes you around the pumpkin patch. This is a classic uh, pumpkin patch activity and it's a great one for kids because uh, if you have kids then uh, you might know this uh, that they usually especially boys love tractors. Uh, tractors are something uh, very interesting with their big wheels uh, little boys tend to love that. So uh, we didn't do this when we went to the pumpkin patch this last time. Uh, however, we'll do that next time 
because my son uh, definitely wanted to do it. Uh, he saw the big wheels on the tractor and he was uh, indicating that he was interested in getting on. Uh, so we'll do that next time. Uh, and this will be better than the train ride because adults can go on the hay ride. So that will be better for my son. And I looked up the origin of these hay rides. And uh, in the past, farm workers uh, used to ride uh, on these wagons loaded with hay or other things. And they would ride back to the barn to unload the hay. And this ride was one of the only times when they could just rest and they didn't need to do anything because being a farm worker uh, is really hard work and it was really hard work in the past uh, and uh, this tradition started from this activity uh, where these farm workers were able to rest on the hay in the wagon uh, as they drove back to the barn after a hard day of work, for example. So uh, that somehow got adopted uh, by these pumpkin patches, and now it's a classic tradition that people do with their families. And one other really classic tradition at pumpkin patches, a classic activity, is the corn maze. So a maze is a labyrinth, right? It's uh, something where you enter and then you have to find the exit, but it's difficult because there are many different paths that you can take and you get lost. Uh, this is a maze. So one of uh, the most popular activities that you can do at pumpkin patches um, is doing the corn maze. You enter in and then you have to find the exit. It's really fun. Uh, there are different levels of difficulty uh, depending on the pumpkin patch. Some corn mazes are much harder than others and they can even be stressful sometimes if they're really hard. I remember going in a corn maze uh, some years ago when I was in college and it was extremely difficult. It took a long time to find the exit and it got a little bit stressful because you get a little bit desperate when you're lost in this labyrinth and you have no idea where you are and you uh, can't see uh, the exit and the walls are really, really high, so you can't jump up and try to see uh, where you are. And I remember that it took me a long time to get out of this maze. So some of them can be pretty difficult, and others are easier and maybe more adequate uh, or appropriate for kids. Uh, but this is a really fun activity. I love this idea. I think it's a super cool tradition to go through this maze. I think it's a very unique thing. There's really nothing else like that uh, to go through a human maze where you're the person walking around and trying to find uh, the exit. That's super cool, in my opinion. And there are other activities as well. For example, some uh, pumpkin patches have pony rides. A pony is a small breed of horse, so kids can sometimes ride these ponies uh, at pumpkin patches. That's something really fun uh, as well. And a lot of these pumpkin patches have uh, these things. I don't know what they're called, but I'll describe them. They are like uh, boards of wood uh, with some type of painting like maybe of a pig for example and then instead of uh, the face 
uh, there's a hole in this board and the kid can go uh, behind the board and stick their head through the hole uh, and then their parents can take pictures of them. So it looks like the kid's face is where the pig's face is supposed to be. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the pumpkin patch that we went to last week had uh, several different uh, types of these things, and that was also fun for my son. Uh, he wanted to uh, take these pictures and then see himself in the pictures afterwards. So that's another fun activity. And there are uh, other activities as well, uh, just depending on which pumpkin patch you go to. Uh, but they're all really fun. And lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the decoration at these pumpkin patches. They're decorated uh, in a really cool autumn fashion. So they feel uh, completely fall themed. So uh, all of the fall colors are there. Uh, they're orange and brown and yellow and red, all of these autumn colors. There are pumpkins and uh, squashes uh, everywhere. Uh, squashes are, I think, the general term for a lot of different uh, things like pumpkins and other types of similar things. I think they're all classified as squashes, if I'm not mistaken. So there are different decorative squashes and pumpkins of different colors and shapes and sizes, and they're used to decorate. And there's hay everywhere. Remember that I mentioned that hay is this dry yellow grass. So there's hay everywhere. There are scarecrows. These are those things that farmers use uh, to scare away the crows or other birds from their farm right? These uh, fake human looking things that you put uh, on a big stick in your farm. So there are scarecrows at uh, pumpkin patches as well. And there are nice lights uh, to illuminate everything uh, when the sun goes down. And it just feels really cool. Uh, there's kind of a uh, romantic fall feeling to pumpkin patches. Uh, it feels like autumn. It's really just a great image of this whole season. So uh, that was a little bit about pumpkin patches in the U.S. I hope that you learned something today, and I hope that this topic was interesting for you. Remember to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast if you're ready to practice with real conversations between native speakers, I talk to people from all over the country and we have natural conversations and I provide the transcript with definitions of key words. So if you're interested in that, make sure to sign up. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want my specialized listening training, uh, or if you want my advanced podcast episodes where I speak fast, then check out my membership. The link is also below. And if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker and you want to read fiction in English, then check out my ebook. Uh, I also have those links down below in the description. And if you like this podcast, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. <laughs>